Like a bird in a prison I dwelt No freedom from my sorrow I felt But Jesus came and listened to me Glory to God, he set me free He set me free, yes, he set me free He broke the bonds of prison for me I'm glory found my Jesus to see Glory to God, he set me free. Now I am climbing higher each day. Darkness of mine has drifted away. My feet are planted on higher ground. Glory to God, I'm homeward bound. He set me free, yes, he set me free. He broke the bonds of prison for me. I'm glory bound, my Jesus, to see. Glory to God, he set me free. Goodbye to sin and things that confound. Not of the world can turn me around. Daily I'm walking, I'm praying to glory to God. I'm going through. He set me free, yes, he set me free. He broke the bond of prison for me. I'm glory bound, my Jesus, to see. Glory to God, he set me free. I'm glory bound, my Jesus, to see. Glory to God, he set me free. I'm free, free indeed. Amen. Well, don't you know there are angels in the corner? And don't you know they are always listening in? And don't you know The Father is present again. Yeah. Well, don't you hear the sound of angels' voices proclaiming Him as Lord and Prince of Peace? He stands alone. Lord and Prince of Peace. Well, don't you know there are angels in the corner? And don't you know they are always listening in? And don't you know The Father is present again. Well, don't you feel the Holy Spirit's moving? It's touching hearts of those who will believe. It's guiding souls to the first. Where he reigns as Lord and Prince of Peace. Well, don't you know there are angels in the corner? And don't you know they are always listening in? And don't you know 
that the Holy Spirit's moving. Yes. And our Father is present again. Yes, our Father is present again. God made him a church yeah. Cause he needed someone To lift up his banner Till the victory is won Are you marching to the beat Of the heavenly drum So carry on church Till Jesus comes Carry on church till Jesus comes. There's no other way. His work can be done with the Father's commission to shine like the sun. Just carry on church till Jesus comes. Church, you have the power and you have the light to show us the way through this perilous night. There are souls in the balance and the race must be run. So carry on, church, till Jesus hey. comes. Carry on church till Jesus comes. There's no other way His work can be done with the Father's commission to shine like the sun. Just carry on church till Jesus comes. Carry on church till Jesus comes. There's no other way His work can be done with the Father's commission to shine like the sun. Just carry on church till Jesus comes. With the Father's commission to shine like the sun, just carry on church till Jesus comes. Amen. On a hill called Calvary, Jesus, my Lord, suffered for me, carried the cross all the way, my sins he paid for. Yes, yes, yes. Then they nailed him to the cross, great was the pain and the loss, he suffered it all because he loved me. Because he loved me, my Savior died. On the cross was crucified. No greater love by mortal man has ever been known. Oh, praise his dear name, he loved me so. Now I am his, he's mine, I know. He suffered it all because he loved me. Then they carried him away, yeah. placed him in a lonely grave. Surely they thought that this would be the end of this man. But on that third and glorious day, God came and rolled the stone away. He rose from the dead. 
Because he loved me. Because he loved me, my Savior died. On the cross was crucified. No greater love by mortal man has ever been known. Oh, praise his dear name, he loved me so. Now I am his, he's mine, I know. He suffered it all because he loved me. He suffered it all because he loved me. Yes, Hallelujah. Amen. Page 207, I think. 207. Since Jesus came into my heart, I want you to stand with me. Let's stand as we sing, since Jesus came into my heart. Amen. What a wonderful change in my life has been wrought since Jesus came into my heart. I have light in my soul for it's long I had sought since Jesus came into my heart. Since Jesus came into my heart. Since Jesus came into my heart. Floods of joy o'er my soul like the sea billows roll. Since Jesus came into my heart. On the third verse, I'm possessed of a hope that is steadfast and sure since Jesus came into my heart. And the dark clouds of doubt, now my pathway obscure, came into my heart. Since Jesus came into my heart since jesus came into my heart floods of joy o'er my soul like the sea billows roll since jesus came into my heart give somebody a welcome this morning amen <laughs> when up on life's billows you are tempest tossed when you are discouraged thinking all is lost count your many blessings name them one by one and it will surprise you what the lord hath done count your blessings name them one by one Count your blessings, see what God hath done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God hath done. Are you ever burdened with a load of care? Does the cross seem heavy you are called to bear? Count your every blessings, every thought will fly. You will see the days go by. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God hath done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God hath done on the last so amid the conflict whether great or small do not be discouraged God is over all count your many blessings angels will attend help and comfort give you to your journeys in count your blessings name them one by one Count your blessings, see what God hath done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, 
see what God has done. Well, amen. Page 31, amen. I serve a risen Savior, He's in the world today. I know that He is living, whatever men may say. I see His hand of mercy, I hear His voice of cheer. And just the time I need Him, He's always near. He lives, He lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's arrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives with him. My heart in all the world around me, I see his loving care. And though my heart grows weary, I never will despair. I know that he is leading through all the stormy blast. The of his appearing will come at last. He lives. Okay, now y'all practiced up. Okay, you got it down pat. Now, if you haven't been singing, I want you to sing with us on this last verse, and let's just do it. Amen. Singing. Rejoice, rejoice, O Christian. Lift up your voice and sing. Eternal hallelujahs to Jesus Christ the King, the hope of all who seek Him, the help of all who find. None other is so loving, so good and kind. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You Jesus is alive. Those other fellers, they're dead. They're, yeah, they they're still in the tomb. You know, grace, grace removes guilt. Mercy brings, uh, mercy brings relief. Takes away misery. You put those two together, grace and, and mercy, you got peace. If you got peace, you're resting. Oh, when mercy walked in. Stood in the courtroom, the judge turned my way. It looks like you're guilty. Now, what do you say? I spoke up, Your Honor. I have no defense, but that's when. And mercy walked in. 
mercy walked in and pleaded my case called to the stand God saving grace the blood was presented that took away my sin forgiven when mercy walked in I stood there and wondered how could this be that someone so guilty had just been set free my chains were broken I was born again the moment that mercy walked in mercy walked in and pleaded my case called to the stand God saving grace the blood was presented that took away my sin forgiven when mercy walked in the blood was presented that took away my sin forgiven when mercy walked in with you please open them up to the book of Luke how many people if you got your Bible with you raise your hand this morning amen hey I see some Bibles here today all right Luke chapter number 20 Luke chapter number 20 <clears throat> I can see clearly now <laughs> all right Luke 20 and we're going to begin at verse number 27 today Read down through verse number 38, verses 27 through 38. I think this is the very first time I've ever preached from this text. And you know, I just want to thank God. I've got a testimony this morning. I thank God for what He does for me. Uh, sometimes things just get busy through the week and my mind is just a flying. I've been awake since 2 a.m. this morning. Woke up. All the gears, they started turning and turning. Just can't go back to sleep. I laid there and fought that. Oh, golly, till 2.45, I said, forget it, I'm getting up. You know, got up and watched the news for a while, and then I read my Bible for a little while, and went over this message. But, uh, but get busy through the week, and I started getting stressed out again, Lord. The eyebrows started going to the top of my head. Uh, you know, I haven't even got a thought here, you know, going on yet. And... You know, I went, to the, I went to another room of the house and I just working on something and the Holy Spirit says, Tim, I've never let you down. What are you worried about? And you know, I thought, thank you, Lord. It's coming. And uh, God gave me something. I want to share it with you today. Like I said, it's from a text I've never preached from before. And you know what? At home, I have a collection of every sermon I've preached in this church since 2012. It'd be easy for me to just give in and say, well, I'll just blindly pick one out and this is what we have this week. But uh, I said, Lord, I just don't want to have a sermon to have a sermon. The people at Graceway, they need something this week and it's got to be fresh. It's got to come from you. Now, there's nothing wrong with preaching old sermons. Believe me, I've done it before. And, uh, and they're there just in case. <laughs> but, uh, but the Lord gave me something fresh. I'd just like to share it with you today. All right. Then came to him certain of the Sadducees, which deny that there is any resurrection. And they asked him, saying, Master, Moses wrote unto us, If any man's brother die, having a wife, 
and he die without children, that is, his brother should take his wife and raise up seed unto his brother. There were therefore seven brethren, and the first took a wife and died without children, and the second took her to wife, and he died childless. And the third took her, and in like manner the seven also, and they left no children and died. Last of all, the woman died also. Therefore, in the resurrection, whose wife of them is she? For seven had her to wife. And Jesus answering said unto them, The children of this world marry and are given in marriage, but they which shall be accounted worthy to obtain that world and the resurrection from the dead neither marry nor are given in marriage. Neither can they die any more. Now that is a good verse right there. Yeah. For they are equal unto the angels and are the children of God yeah. being the children of the resurrection. Yeah. Now that the dead are raised, even Moses showed at the bush when he calleth the Lord, the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, for he is not a God of the dead, but of the living, for all live unto him. And let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for your goodness today. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you, Lord, that they walked into my life that night as a 12-year-old boy when I said, Jesus, would you please save me? And God, thank you for every testimony of every born-again believer here today. Now, Father, I pray that you'll help me. Holy Spirit, put the words in my mouth today. Give me words to say I haven't even counted on today, Lord. And Father, this is your service. This is your message. And I'm the vessel that you, I'm asking you to use today. Is there someone here that's not saved? Well, I pray that today they'll be saved. Let them help them to believe upon the Lord Jesus. And Father, I pray for our video audience that, God, we make them welcome today. And I just pray that one out there that's never trusted Christ, that they will today. For the Christian, may they receive what that heart needs today. And Father, we ask it all in the name of Jesus, your precious Son. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. That last verse, He is not the God of the dead, but of the living. Amen. Amen. You know, back there in my office, you can stop in there and look at it if you want to. Just above my desk, there's a framed poster there. And on that poster, there's a list of names of the Lord Jesus. Sometimes when I'm sitting there at my desk, I just love to look at it and just gaze through every name. When Mike and Ray are trying to get my attention, they're talking to me, and I'm acting like I'm listening to them, I'm looking at the names of Jesus. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> but you know, uh, when I'm looking at those names and I get blessed by what those names remind me of at times. Uh, Jesus many times has come to my rescue. Anybody here ever been rescued by Jesus in this life? Amen. And uh, there's times that uh, when I see those names up there, I think about the times that Christ has come and comforted my heart. There's been times of joy that, man, I just wanted to shout. There's been times that I've just been given great, peace and times of just being outright blessed of the Lord. Amen. When I look at those names up there, I see the name, the chief cornerstone. Brother, that's where we build our faith. Amen. Is upon the Lord Jesus Christ and nothing else. Paul said that as a matter of fact, something similar to that. Paul said, I've laid a foundation. You come and build on this foundation. Amen. That's what we should. And that foundation is Jesus. Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah. And buddy, I tell you, Hezbollah and Hamas are about to find that out for sure. Amen. Amen. And Jesus is our bright and morning star. He is the almighty God and he is our good shepherd. Glory to his name today. But when I sum up all of those names, I come to a conclusion for me. And that is that Jesus is my everything. Honey, I'm sorry, but it's Jesus. Amen. Jesus is my everything. In particular, I love those names when he said that he is the way, the truth, and the life. Brother, who does not want life in here today? Who does not want to know the way? Who does not want to know the life? Amen. I want to know all of those. And thank God I do this morning. And if you're born again, you do know the way. You do know the truth. And you do know the life. Jesus is my life and I hope that he's yours. And you know what? If he is not, then the Bible is very clear in what it says that we are, if without Jesus, spiritually dead. Spiritually dead. Dead to the things of God. Dead to the life of God living in you and through you.
I believe I said this more than once last week in my, in my message that the greatest story that's ever been told is the story of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. This is the greatest story because it is the story of eternal life. There is a passage that in that story when the angel said to the women when they come there to the tomb early that morning to anoint the body of Jesus, they said, Why seek ye the living among the dead? Now here in Luke chapter 20, Jesus is in the temple and the Bible said that he was teaching, I like this, he was teaching the people and preached the gospel. Verse 1 of chapter 20 stood out to me because of two things, where Jesus taught and what he preached. You know, where was he? He was in the temple, amen? And now listen to these definitions of taught and preached. When Jesus taught... He was giving instruction on doctrine. As an example, the doctrine of God, the doctrine of Jesus Christ, the doctrine of the Holy Spirit, etc., etc. And then when he preached, listen to this, when Jesus preached, he spoke the glad tidings of the coming kingdom of God and of the salvation to be obtained through Christ. Amen? That's what Jesus preached in the temple. Don't you think that's something that we ought to be preaching here? When we have Wednesday night Bible study, I think it's a good idea that maybe we teach upon the doctrines of the Bible. Amen? The doctrine of God, the doctrine of Jesus, the doctrine of the Holy Spirit, the doctrine of scriptures, scriptures is a good thing too. Amen? So I'll tell you this, folks. When somebody asks you, and here's why I say this, we don't have a Baptist name or a Pentecostal name or a Church of Christ name on our sign out there. It is Graceway Fellowship Church. Amen. Amen. <laughs> So if somebody asked you uh, what kind of church Graceway Fellowship is, what do we teach, you tell them that we teach and we preach here lifting up the name of Jesus Christ and in his teachings and we present the good news of Christ's burial, his, uh, I mean his crucifixion, his burial, and his resurrection. Yeah. That's what we do here, amen? Yeah. We don't need a, a name to tag our church name out there. We're just going to preach the Bible. We're just going to preach Jesus. We're just going to, in every service, we're just going to, lift up the name of Jesus. Amen. And you know, that's a good thing to do because here's why. The ultimate goal is to bring people to Christ. Amen. That's the ultimate goal. Get everybody we can ready for the rapture. Get everybody we can ready to take that last breath in this life. Get everybody ready to go to glory someday. Amen. Because we're all going to face that time. So our ultimate goal is to get folks ready. How do we do that? We do that by lifting up the name of Jesus because he said he would draw all men to him. Amen. And brother, I want to be someone that's partly responsible for drawing people to Jesus. So I'm going to do my part as a preacher. I'm going to do my part as a Christian. I'm going to do my part as a born again believer. I'm just going to lift up Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. If you've got problems in your life, well, the Bible can address those too. But when you listen to me, I'm going to tell you about Jesus. Jesus, amen? amen. <laughs> Some people don't like that, but boy, I sure do, amen? amen. <laughs> That's the kind of church we are. Now, this next verse in chapter 20, the chief priest and the scribes, they asked Jesus this question. By what authority that are you doing these things? Well, Jesus turns the tables on them, and he said this. Uh, what baptism was John the Baptist, of heaven or of men? I thought this was good. After reasoning among themselves, they said to him, well, we cannot tell. <laughs> well, Jesus said this, well, neither will I tell you by what authority I do these things. You know what? Jesus put these men on the spot. And here's the deal. The common people knew that the baptism of John was from heaven. If the common people knew, surely these priests and scribes, they knew it too, amen. But you know what they did? They hid the truth. Yeah. They hid the truth. I'm sad to say that there's preachers out here today that believe a whole lot like we teach here, but they hide the truth. That hurts me to say that because uh, uh, everybody thinks that you got to have a message to help keep people in line. You know who keeps me in line? Holy Spirit of God. Holy Spirit of God keeps me in line. Well, the best that he can. (laughs) I guess I have to laugh about that a little bit. But... uh, uh, You cannot hide the truth, ladies and gentlemen. Amen. They buried the truth. They refused to believe in Jesus is the whole thing. They refused to believe in Jesus. The chief priests and scribes, they wanted to get rid of Jesus, so they tried to put him on the spot in front of all the people there. So they asked him another tricky question about money. 
Jesus famously said, render unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's and the things of God's that are God's. And finally, these Sadducees, they come along, and these guys, they might have the trickiest question of all. And first of all, let me inform you, the Sadducees are a group of people that don't even believe that there is a resurrection from the dead. But yet, their question is in reference to the resurrection. They make up the story about this fella that has six brothers, and the first fella marries this woman, and he doesn't have any children, so by the law of Moses, the next brother in line gets to marry his wife. And then when he dies, it's the next brother right on down the line, and finally the wife dies, and then they ask this question in the end, in the resurrection, whose wife will she belong to? Because all of the brothers had her to wife at one time. That's some kind of question for a person that, is, that doesn't even believe in the resurrection, isn't it? <laughs> so Jesus gives his answer. He says, those who live in this world, they marry and they are given in marriage. But those who are accounted worthy to obtain that world and the resurrection from the dead, in other words, those who are born again, they neither marry nor are given in marriage. I got a feeling we're all going to be single in heaven. Amen. <laughs> Going to be single in heaven. So, um, Jesus goes on to say this, Neither can they die anymore. Neither can they die anymore. They are equal to the angels, and they are the children of God and of the resurrection. Jesus then goes on to remind them about Moses at the burning bush, and he referred to the, listen to me, he referred to God as the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and he is not a God of the dead, but of the living. In other words, listen to me, as sure as you're hearing my voice this morning preach to you, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are very well alive in heaven at this very instant moment. Amen? Amen. They're very much alive right now. And that's what Jesus was letting them know, that nobody dies after, if you're in the resurrection. Amen? By some counts, there's maybe a little more than a thousand names or titles used for God in the Bible. But each one of these descriptions, they tell us about God's nature. They tell us a little bit about His character. But when this expression that Jesus used in Luke 20, when He called Him the God of the living, that is a powerful statement. Amen? Our God is the God of the living. Amen? Amen? You know, there's been, and Brother Ray alluded to this a moment ago, there's been many false gods in this life or in this world. Since the beginning of time, there's been many, many false gods. There's been many people that followed these false gods. Guess what happened? All of those false gods died. Guess what happened to all of their devout followers? They died. They died. But our God is alive, amen. Our God is the God of the living. He conquered death. You know what? Only saved born-again people have a blessed assurance because he is the God who took care of the past and is the God of the past. He's the God of the present. He's the God of tomorrow. Amen? Yeah. Now, I don't know if I'm going to get to see tomorrow or not, but I'll tell you this. If I do get to see tomorrow, God's in tomorrow already. Amen? God already knows about what's happening. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. And I'm glad that that's my God we're talking about yeah. today. God is the God of the living because he's also the God who conquered death. It was not enough for Jesus to just go to the cross and die for us, ladies and gentlemen, but Jesus had to rise from the dead, and he, is, he has victory over the grave. It is the resurrection of Jesus that promises eternal life. Did you hear what I said? It is the resurrection of Jesus that promises eternal life. There's no man that can get us to heaven. There's no other way that we can get to heaven. It's only through Jesus Christ. I'll say that publicly one more time for those who are unbelievers. It is only through Jesus Christ that anyone can get to heaven. Amen. He is the resurrected Son of God. And without the resurrection, ladies and gentlemen, none of us would have any hope for this life or in eternity. Paul wrote this in 1 Corinthians 15. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. In other words, there's more to the story instead of just this life. Amen. I heard this story about this young preacher. He was getting ready to conduct his very first funeral service, and he wasn't really sure what he would say, so he th thought, he, maybe I should search the Bible out and see what Jesus said at funerals. So what he found was not, 
so much a message of comfort, and you know that's fine to comfort people at a funeral. A preacher always hopes he can offer some words of comfort to the family, but what he found was victory, amen? This is what he discovered in the Bible. Three times Jesus came in contact with dead people. He brought them all back to life, amen? That's a great victory. And you know what's, in, you know what's encompassed in that victory? is a lot of comfort, amen? Yeah. Amen? Glory to God. I remember Jairus' daughter. Uh, Jairus, uh, he came to Jesus and asked Jesus if he would heal his daughter who was dying. And I want you to notice when you see, when you read that story about Jairus, he was a ruler in the synagogue. He was what? I said he was a ruler in the synagogue. Most likely, I want to point that out because most likely him being a member of the synagogue and a ruler, he may have not had very many good thoughts about Jesus. Maybe uh, Maybe he didn't really like Jesus in the beginning like all the other priests and the Sadducees and the Pharisees and all that sort of thing and the priests and the rulers. But you know what? But he had heard about Jesus healing all these people. And the Bible said that he came to Jesus and he fell at his feet and he besought him greatly to lay hands upon his daughter. You know why that is? It's because he's a father who has a daughter that had a need and now he's come to his wits end. I need help for my daughter. Amen. And I heard that Jesus can heal people. You know what? When I read this account about Jairus, I read nowhere that he ever called Jesus master. He didn't even call him uh, the son of David like the blind men did whenever they asked for healing. I'm not even sure that Jairus at this point is even believing that Jesus is the Messiah. But he has definitely heard of these miracles of others. And because, as I mentioned, of his love for his daughter, he seeks out Jesus. And you know what Jesus does? Jesus agrees to go to his house. And you know what happens as they're going to the house of Jairus? My goodness, they're in this crowd, and all of a sudden, Jesus feels that there's a virtue, that's a power that left his body, and he stops in the crowd and said, Who touched me? And the disciples said, well, Jesus, you're in a big crowd. Everybody's rubbing and touching you. And he said, no, there was a virtue that went out from me. Somebody touched me for healing is what it was all about. Well, directly this lady, that's a good word to say, directly. And uh, the, directly this lady comes along and she, she admits to Jesus what she did. And Jesus said this to her. He said two things to her. He said, your faith has made you whole. You know what? I believe that lady got saved right there. Yeah. You know why? Because she believed that Jesus yeah. could do something for her. Secondly, he says, go in peace and be whole from your illness. I believe she got physically healed at that very moment too. Now, during all of this confusion and everything going on, there's a servant that belongs to Jairus that comes up and says, Master, trouble not Jesus any longer for your daughter is dead. Can you imagine how this news had to stun Jairus at that moment? Ladies and gentlemen, we're not just talking about Bible characters, but we're talking about real life human beings yeah. that lived centuries before us that still have emotion just like we do. Amen? They still have a heart that can be broken. They get worried about things. They get worried over their family. Jairus was worried about his family. His daughter has died, and now the announcement's been made. But you know what? The Scripture says... That Jesus, as soon as he heard the word spoken, said to Jairus, he turned to him and says, Don't be afraid, only believe. Only believe. Can we see from that passage right there just how interested Jesus is in our situations in life? Sometimes before we can even uh, think things through or try to analyze our situation, <laughs> Jesus is, always, is already answering prayer. But wait a minute, Brother Tim, I haven't even prayed yet. But wait a minute, child of God. Child of God, yeah. you belong to Him. He careth for you. Amen. He's already, he's already aware of your situation before you are. He knew this thing was coming into our life days and weeks and in eternity past before we was even born. He knew the situations we'd be faced in this life. He knows about today when we leave here. He knows about tomorrow if we make it there. Amen. He is the God of tomorrow. Amen. And Jesus is concerned about you and I just like he's concerned about these Bible characters that we're reading about today. He's interested in us. So Jesus arrives at the home of Jairus and there's many people standing outside the house and inside the house. They're mourning and they're crying and Jesus says, why are you, why are you making such a noise about all this? She's not dead. She's just sleeping. Wow. You know what? The people begin to laugh at him. But let me just tell you this. The answer of our problems, ladies and gentlemen, is not dead. Amen. 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 The answer to our problems is not dead. So they immediately went 
from tears to laughter, scorning Jesus, making fun of him for what he said. And Jesus said, everybody leave. Everybody leave. Mom and Dad, you come with me. They go into her room and Jesus took her by the hand and he said, damsel, arise. And I like what Mark says here. Mark likes to use the word straightway. And it means immediately. And in and, and the book of Mark, it means that she rose immediately and she walked. Amen? It's a pretty good story. Jesus raised this little girl back to life. You know something interesting about that girl? You know how old she was? She was 12 years old. You know how long that lady had that infirmity that touched Jesus in the crowd? Twelve years. Something about twelve that day. I don't know what it is, but yeah, we ought to look it up, I guess. You ought to look that up, Brother Mike, and fill us in at the next lunch meeting. Amen? <laughs> Amen. But you know, there's another story, and we've heard this story very often. It's about a fellow by the name of Lazarus. Lazarus is a friend of Jesus, and the Bible said that he got ill, and he has two sisters, and they send for Jesus, Mary and Martha, they send for Jesus to come and heal him, but Jesus delays his coming, and eventually the Bible said that Lazarus died. Eventually, though, Jesus, four days later, he comes to Bethany, and when he's there, he sees very a lot of emotion going on between these sisters, and they tell Jesus, Lazarus would not have died, Jesus, if you were been here. But then Martha expresses her faith, and she tells Jesus, I know that even now, hmm, what now you think Martha's talking about? She's talking about the now that Lazarus is dead. He's dead. Everybody say dead. Yeah. He's dead. His spirit's gone. He's left him. She follows that up. She says, whatsoever you will ask of God, God will give it to you. Jesus, I believe that about you. That's what she's saying. And Jesus said, your brother shall rise again. And Martha says, well, I know he'll rise in the resurrection. And Jesus spoke those famous, beautiful words. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. And uh, I'm going to come back to that scripture in just a minute. To fill, uh, there's, there's more to it. But Jesus stands outside the tomb of Lazarus. And then he said, take away the stone. Ladies and gentlemen, you know, before we can have miracles happen in our life, miracles, Brother Tim talks about miracles, yeah. Because I believe in miracles are things that happen. Amen? Amen? Now, miracles are not by the hand of man. Miracles are by the hand of God. Amen? Amen? And I believe we have a miracle God today. Amen? Yeah. Hey, it's a miracle that you and I left our mother's wombs and took our first breath of air. Amen? Right. And look at us today. We have grown up, haven't we? Some of us have surpassed that grown up. <laughs> but we, we have. It's a miracle that what God has done for us. Amen? You know, we need to have the stone moved away. That's blocking our faith, amen, when we, want God, when we want to see God do things. When you exercise your faith, there's going to be some objections. There's going to be some objections. When you believe that God can do something, there's going to be somebody come up and say, Hey, you can't do that. Lazarus is stinking already. Yeah. Amen. Don't get in the way of my miracle. Don't call my miracle something that stinks. God's got this, amen. amen. Jesus stands outside the tomb. And he says, Lazarus, come forth. Guess what happened? He that was wrapped up from head to toe, he come out in grave clothes, amen. And Jesus said, loose him and let him go. There's always going to be objectors to the, to the work of God. Jesus said, then uh, Jesus asked one question. He said, didn't I tell you that if you'll just believe that you'll see the glory of God? If we'll just believe, we'll see the glory of God, amen. Yeah. Hmm. You know, Lazarus got raised up from the dead. The daughter of Jairus got raised up. There's a third one, and I like this one. I think I made reference to this widow's son last week a couple of times. Jesus enters the city of Nain, and there's a widow woman there. She has a son who died. And when you look at another gospel there, it says that he was a man, so this is an adult man, and he's still living with his mom, and he's taking care of his mom, who's a widow. He is her only means of her having a living. He's probably got a job and he's bringing money home, paying the bills. He's taking care of the house with the roof leaks. He gets up there and fixes it. You get the picture. Well, this boy has died and this woman is a widow woman. She's up in years. She's not going to go to work anywhere. She can't take care of herself. And they're having this funeral walking down through the city streets and Jesus comes along and Jesus already knows what's going on. He didn't have to ask any questions. Who died? He didn't say, who's this boy belong to? What happened to him? Jesus already knows. And you know what? The scripture says that Jesus walked over to that funeral procession and touches the buyer. The B-I-E-R. Hmm. I had to look that up. You know what that is? That is just the thing that this boy was laying on. Jesus didn't even touch him. 
He touched the thing he was laying on. And this boy came back to life, amen. Jesus said, young man, arise. And he that was dead set up and he began to speak. Glory to God. Isn't that funny when Jesus heals people that automatically they start talking, automatically they start walking. There's none of this, oh, exercise and stuff. Oh, my bones are kind of creaky from all that disease I had. No, when Jesus heals yeah. somebody, it's just immediately. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. That's when you know that something of the truth is going on. Amen. So, here are three people where Jesus has raised them from the dead. Now, let's go back to Luke chapter 20 for just a minute. Let's look at this. The Sadducees are challenging Jesus with a question about a woman who's been married to seven brothers. They all died without children. So, the question is, whose wife is she going to be in the resurrection? In short, Jesus said there are no marriages in the resurrection. So these resurrected ones, they'll not die anymore because they are the children of God. And Jesus caps this off by reminding them about Moses' visitation there at the burning bush when he called the Lord, the, when he called the Lord the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of the living and not the dead. He was making reference to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob who died centuries before, but they're very much alive today. And Jesus said, He is not the God of the dead, but of the living. In contrast, we can see, or excuse me, in context, we can see how what Jesus was talking about here, that all those who die in Christ are resurrected back to life. Did you know that if you die today, you're going to be resurrected back to life? Amen? Amen. That day's coming. There's a day when, the, when Jesus is going to descend from heaven with the shout, with the trump of God, with the voice of the archangel, and the dead in Christ are going to rise up first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. Amen. That day's coming, ladies and gentlemen. When I read that verse that God is not the God of the dead, but about... But the God of the living. It made me think of how much God wants us to live as in being resurrected back to life. Let's look back for a moment and see what's happening in each case. Jesus has a concern for people. Here's Jairus, this man, and he's a ruler in the synagogue. He ha you might say he is like a top executive of the church. He has a high position where he even has servants working under him. As mentioned before, nothing said of, of him about actually being a believer of Jesus. More than likely, he may have been somewhat critical of Jesus at some time until he had a personal need. Then things were different. A believer or not, look what Jesus did for Jairus. He came to the man's aid and raised his daughter back to life. You know what I heard this said the other day by a preacher, and I liked it. Even the lost man is being blessed by God today. Yeah. Amen. Amen. The goodness of God will bring men to repentance, yeah. the Bible says too. Hmm. Uh, during that process, there's a woman with an issue of blood. Now, let's look at this woman for just a minute. She was just a common citizen of the town. She had no authority. She wasn't working in the church anywhere. She probably, she, I know she didn't have any money. The Bible said she had spent it all on physicians that did her no good. Nobody could heal her of w what she had. The clothes that she was wearing, they were probably the only thing she had left. Unlike Jairus, he had plenty of everything. But look what happened. Jesus came to her immediate need, not being concerned about her financial status. Amen? When it came to the widow's son, uh, to the widow who lost her son, Jesus had compassion on them. No one had to inform Jesus what was going on. He knew because he's all-knowing. He knew the situation. That dead son was her only means for food and shelter, and Jesus raised him back to life. Jesus knows your situation. He knows my situation. Amen. It matters not who we are or what our status is. Jesus Christ cares for you. Jesus was the great physician and he healed them all. Jesus demonstrated this power when he stood there at that tomb of Lazarus with Mary and Martha having broken hearts. And he said, I am the resurrection and the life. And here's what I wanted to come back to earlier. Jesus continued on. He said, he that believeth in me Though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. You know what? That to me is a great salvation scripture right there. He that believeth in me shall never die. I heard it just this week, yet all convoluted again. 
that you got to do certain things. You got to believe a certain thing. You got, you got it. You got it. You got it. Jesus said, "Believe in me, yes. and you shall have eternal life." What does it mean to believe upon the Lord? I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. I believe He died for me on the cross. I believe He paid for all my sins. I believe when He was buried, I believe that God raised Him back to life again. That's what I believe about Jesus. And I said, "Yes, Jesus, I want you to save me, please." And He did. Amen. Amen. That's what it means to believe upon the Lord. So what is Jesus saying with all of these examples? He is saying he is not the God of the dead, but of the living. I wish that people could understand, those who are lost today, if you're listening to me, I wish you could really understand that God wants you to live. And what God wants to give you is life. God's not wanting to give you a long list of rules for you to try to live by and abide by. God just wants to give you life. It's called the gift of of eternal life. Amen. It's called the gift of eternal life. So, can I ask you this? Have you been made alive? Have you been made alive? In the book of Ephesians chapter 2, Paul begins talking to born again believers and he says this, and you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. Do you see that? There was a time in our personal history that we were dead in trespasses and sin. We had a dead spirit. It was not our fault. We just happened to be born on planet earth, amen, to our mothers and to our fathers. And God said that we were born in Adam and Adam fell in the garden. We know that story. And because of Adam's fall, we inherited sin in our life. We were born with it, couldn't get out of it except one way, that's through the cross. And God provided the, a way, didn't He? God gave us Jesus to go to the cross and died for us there. The Bible says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There will be a day in our future we'll stand before God who is holy and righteous. And we'll give an account for our life here on planet Earth. When the lost man or woman stands before God, they'll stand there of their own account, being dead in their spirit, never have knowing God through His Son Jesus. The judgment will be pronounced as eternal death and in hell separated from God forever. Before the born again believer, whew, <laughs> thank God, it's much different, ladies and gentlemen. We'll stand before the Father who made our spirit alive in His Son and we'll be welcomed into that heavenly city to live forever because we have been resurrected back to life by the concern and compassion and the sacrifice and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Do you see how compassionate that Jesus is? Do you see his concern for the world today? Do you see his concern for you, Mr. Uh, lost man, Mr. Mrs. Lost Lady? If you don't know Jesus today, God is concerned about you. And I don't know why it is, but it seems like for the last three, I think this is the fourth week now, I have preached nothing but salvation sermons. I, I, I just believe that God has laid this on my heart because there's something getting ready to happen. I don't know. It could be the rapture. I'll never put a day on that. Uh, Jesus didn't even know when he was here. Only the Father knows. Amen. That God will choose that time and it could be today. It could be tomorrow. But you need to know Christ in your heart today. Amen. Amen. Today is the is accepted time for salvation. Amen. Be saved today. Be saved right now. Know the Lord. Make sure that when you take your last breath or if the rapture happens that you're ready to meet Jesus in the air. And let me tell you something. God is not the God of the dead. That God is the God of the living. Amen. So the question is this today. Brother Ray, come on up, Miss Reba, Brother Mike. Do you have the resurrected life of Jesus living in and through you today? Have you been made alive in Christ like Paul was talking about? There was a time when we were dead in our spirit, but we've been quickened. That word quickened means made alive. Jesus made us alive. Thank God for that. That just excites me to know that's that's what Jesus wanted to give me through my whole life, was life. And you know what? I, today, and, and if you are born again, <coughs> you are right now living your eternal life. One of these days our address will change. That's the only thing that's going to happen. Our address will change. But the question is today, do you have life? Listen to me. God is great in mercy. Even though you are dead in your spirit today, He'll make you alive in Jesus. You'll be resurrected on that last day to be with God forever. And you'll be living with the God of life. And He'll be your God. Amen. Let's bow our heads for just a moment. Heavenly Father, I pray today if there's one in this audience that's never been saved, I pray that they will today. Help them to believe upon the Lord Jesus. 
As Paul directed that jailer that day in Acts chapter 16, believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. God help him today to call on you. Help that Christian today that may be going through a trial and a situation, Lord. Help him to understand, Lord, you already know about that situation. You're aware of it fully. You was aware of it in the eternity past. You knew it was coming today. Help him, Lord, to just trust, wait, and believe that, God, you're going to take care of this. And, Father, thank you for your compassionate son who died on the cross at Calvary for us, who was buried and then was resurrected back to life. Father, he lives. He lives today. And thank you that he lives in our hearts who are born again in Jesus' name. Would you stand to your feet this morning? I've asked Brother Ray and Miss Reba, let's sing this song today. When they sing it as our congregational song, He Lives, He Lives. The Holy Spirit said, let's end with that today. Amen, because Jesus lives, doesn't he? And you know what? If you're saved, you're living in him. We are connected to Christ. Amen. We're bonded together. Forever, nothing will ever change that. Glory to God. Go ahead. Page 31 if you need it. I serve the risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that He is living, whatever men may say. I see His hand of mercy. I hear His voice of cheer. And just the time I need him, he's always near. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to implore. You ask me how I know. Peace.